you have all of those ingredients, you should get a fizzy kombucha. Are you guys familiar with kombucha? Perhaps you found my channel because of my already popular video on YouTube. In that video, I shared basically an overview of how I make kombucha and how you can make it at home. Well, tonight I got the kitchen cleaned up and I wanted to just go over some kombucha things because I'm actually going to be doing it here in my own kitchen tonight. Needed to get this job done. But I also wanted the opportunity to hang out with you guys and talk a little bit about 2018, the past year. Today, this video launches on the last day of 2018. And I just feel like it's a good opportunity for you and I to hang out and chat and talk about how wonderful the year was while we make a second fermentation of kombucha. In the process, we'll be starting a new batch too. Behind me here on the stove, I have some tea brewing, and that's going to be the start of our next batch. But in the meantime, we're going to take what we already have. This is finished kombucha ready to go into a second fermentation, a second fermentation container. These are some new bottles I got on Amazon for Christmas, and I thought I'd try them out for the first time here in this video. This they've never I haven't used them yet, so It'll be interesting to see how they work. It looks like a good sturdy jar. It's an 18 ounce jar and a nice screw on cap. So we'll see how those work. The first thing that we're gonna do is to take our scobies out of uh, the, the jars here and protect them so that we can get started with this tea. Before that, I gotta wash my hands. These scobies are very mature, very thick. In fact, I have several layers here that I can take off. When they get like this, they're multiple layers and the bottom layers are turning, you know, a little bit goopy. I like to peel off those bottom layers and I'll I'll set that aside and discard it. I have had questions lately on what to do with those scobies, so I'll I'll share a few ideas with you, but that top layer, that's the one I'll be reusing for my kombucha. So 2018 has been a, an interesting year. It's been a little tough for us here on the Daddy Curbs farm. Many of you who follow the channel know that we had some challenges this year with our son Luke who has special needs and um, he was in the hospital several times. I'm happy to report that he is doing well right now and uh, right now actually he's in the living room watching TV while he's uh, getting fed through his feeding tube. So these are the uh, older scobies that I'll be not using in this future ferment in the tonight but uh, these two those are nice. So every time I do this and I put them in the jar if you watch my other video you know I put a little bit of kombucha in there to help keep it happy and then I'll set this aside and cover it with a towel or a plate. Just something to protect that, keep stuff, you know, flies if there are any, or dust, a lot of extra contaminants getting into that bowl, just to protect those scobies. 2018 was also a really good year for me on the YouTube channel, lots of growth. I had one video that reached maybe close to 2 million views, I, don't, I haven't checked on it lately. Another one that is close to a million views. Lots of good feedback from that. So I appreciate you helping my channel become something special uh, by viewing those and sharing those chan or those uh, those videos. Just got to get the tea. Make sure it's getting well brewed back here. Another question I get with kombucha is how do you make the tea? Well, for me, it's very very simple, not complicated. In this case, tonight, I'm using a large tea bag. These are actually designed to brew one gallon of tea each. So I throw two of them in the pot and the thick, uh, rich tea that comes out of there will be enough to brew two gallons of tea. Now this is just one ingredient, plain black tea, just like I promote in the other kombucha video. You guys have really made this YouTube channel fun for me. The interaction that I get in the, the comments and through the family group. I'm wearing my shirt, by the way. This is the family shirt. says, I'm in the family. That's a closed Facebook group that is for people interested in uh, connecting to the Daddy Curbs Farm channel a little closer 
and with the community that's forming around it. So with our kombucha, uh, one of the things that helps stir the kombucha up and make the brew more consistent is, that must be my fans calling me on my phone, I should have turned that off, is that I pour the kombucha from the glass container, the brewing container, into the plastic pitcher that I'll pour from. This gives me two opportunities. One, to make sure I get a nice mix. And then I also, that last little bit at the bottom that has a lot of the dregs, I don't pour that into the pitcher. I keep that aside and I'll rinse that out in the sink. Now these new brewing containers I purchased on Amazon uh, have already gone through the dishwasher so they, they are clean. It is important when you get something brand new that you go ahead and wash it uh, because you don't know what kind of residue is on it from the factory. This year in 2018 one of the fun things that I got to do was go hang out at Good of the Land Fest in Lindale, Texas with several other YouTubers and um, also several members of my community that were there uh, just to enjoy the festivities and to shake hands with me. And that was really fun. If you have a chance to go to that event again next year, it's like I said in Lindale, Texas, you should check that out. It's a lot of fun. And you'll probably get to meet some YouTubers that you've been watching for a long time. So since these are 18 ounce containers, I'm going to put a little more than my typical quarter cup. I'm going to use a third of a cup. I'll be using three different juices tonight just to use them up. This is the mango that we all love. Each, each lid comes with a little handle. I think these glass containers were intended to be like uh, water or juice containers on the go and they're really thick so they're hard to break and then they have the little carry lid. It's kind of cool. The lids also have a silicone ring which will help seal it up. One of the reasons I purchased this was for that ring because I like my brew to be completely sealed tight on the second fermentation to make sure that all of the carbonation goes into the brew and not uh, lost. You know, because we like it fizzy. That's why we brew this, right? Some people don't care and they like that first fermentation and not as fizzy. Although this batch is pretty fizzy. But I do like a little fizz and I like a little bit of fruit flavor so that's why I do this. My Saturday morning live shows have really become quite the routine, quite the ritual for me on Saturday mornings and the group of people that hang out with me on Saturday mornings just make that a thrill. It is so fun and all through 2018, I'm not, I don't think I missed a Saturday, I hope not. It's just been a lot of fun. Uh, to hang out on Saturday mornings with that group of people, sharing conversation, and you know, just connecting with the community. I'm not sure how many uh, how many bottles I'm going to get out of this. We'll see. There's two mangoes, three mangoes, and that used up one jar. So I have a little bit more of the black cherry. That was my last brew, and I liked it a lot. So, we'll do more of that. That black cherry made a really nice, I don't even know how to describe it, almost a wine-like flavor in the kombucha. Really rich, full of flavor. Another flavor that I'm going to try this time is uh, we buy sometimes this acai juice or acai juice, however you pronounce that, and uh, it has to be used up pretty quickly. We use it in some of Luke's feed through his feeding tube. We also make smoothies sometimes with it, but I need to make sure that this gets used within the seven days so it's as good as possible. I, I have no idea what kind of kombucha it's going to make, but we're going to try it out. I'm just going just gonna to do a couple of these. It's really thick. Put that back in the refrigerator. 
I left three jars empty right now because I'm not how I'm not sure how far this is going to go. So let's try this out. Let me get back here on one of the aside juice. We're going to fill it up eh, about that far. About to where the the jar starts to turn. The shoulder, I guess, is what it's called. Spilled over on that black cherry a little bit. All right, now I can finish topping these off. Looks like I am going to get more than these jars, so I might have to use those last three. All right, let's bring this up here. Let's do two. I really do want to thank you guys for helping to make 2018 fun and successful for me and sharing this time with me. You, you, might, you might have come here for the kombucha, but if you are hanging out for the conversation, I appreciate that. If you want a more direct video about how to make kombucha, please do check out my other video, which is all about that. Help, helping to uh, share uh, the way I do it, the tips and tricks, and you know the simple method of just brewing the the tea and making the kombucha and then your second ferment. That looks like I might get all, yeah. I'm gonna save, I almost forgot I need to save that for the next batch. That would have been a disaster making that next batch without any starter liquid. I do have the starter liquid that's in the bowl but I like to have a little extra just in case. It's a good thing I had a little left over there. Beautiful. Now we'll go through the process of getting rid of that funnel, capping all these jars off. And they fit really nice. I think that's gonna produce a really nice bottle of second ferment and uh, the, it's gonna stay nice and fizzy. I have a good feeling about this one. With all of those full and capped off, we can put them aside. I'll put them in the pantry in a little bit. Right now, I just wanna get them out of the way so I can clean this counter off so we can make our tea and start the next batch. Now, these have been steeping in here for probably 10 minutes or so. And the tea's looking nice and dark. That's how I like it. I don't want, I don't want a light brew. I want something that's really rich. So let me get Another wooden spoon here. Pick these up. Drain a little bit of that liquid out. And we'll set these tea bags aside. The goat really likes to eat the tea bags. I make enough tea for two gallons. That's why there's two large tea bags in here. And every time I make the tea for kombucha, I use one cup of sugar per gallon. So this here, while this is still warm, I'm going to put two cups of sugar in here and stir it up so it melts really fast. That's still really warm. We can't use it yet. It has to cool down. And the way I cool it down is I mix it with cold water. That's why I brew it in a, a, a condensed batch and then dilute it. That way I can cool it down faster. We'll get our cold water from the refrigerator because it's also filtered. All right, good, here we are, ready to make our tea. Well, we have the two vessels rinsed out, and I'm gonna take this warm tea and... I really meant to pour it in there. I don't have a second gallon pitcher. We'll have to do this like a puzzle. I'll pour this in here. Pour my tea in my pitcher and make it easier to pour. Now I'll put half of the tea 
Over here in one pitcher, pour half the water. Hopefully I got that right, and then I'll put the rest of the tea over here. Oh, I nailed it. Look how close that is. That already cooled that down quite a bit, but I gotta let it sit before I put the scobies back in it, simply because I wanna make sure the temperature is appropriate for the scoby that goes back in there, or else it could sink to the bottom, which would make it look like it's not a successful brew doesn't necessarily mean it's going to not work. It's just, it looks a lot nicer and you feel better about it when it's floating on top. By the way, I'd like to share that I am uh, as guilty as anyone else of using sort of improper terms in the, the kombucha process. First of all, what we refer to as a SCOBY, that gelatinous mass, cellulose base mass on top, uh, is not really the SCOBY. The SCOBY is the symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast which lives in the liquid. This is actually called the pellicle. It's more of a skin. It forms on top to help uh, protect and to create that anaerobic environment in uh, the liquid to help that bacteria and yeast do the job that it needs. So. We'll continue calling it a SCOBY simply because that's what most people know of a SCOBY. But it's also a little incorrect because we really should be saying the pellicle. Um, some people call it a mushroom, but most of us know it as a SCOBY. So we'll pr I'll probably keep saying that just because it's habit at this point. But the SCOBY, the actual colony of bacteria and yeast, lives mostly in the liquid. Gosh, I hope I got all that right. You know, I'm a home brewer. I started my stuff online, you know, doing research online and then bringing it home and then sharing what I learned on uh, YouTube. It's very possible that some of the things I say could be slightly not scientifically correct because I didn't learn this from going to school or going to a science class or anything like that. I'm on a journey just like you are. So we'll just give each other a little grace and make some kombucha. I'm really excited about these new containers. I think that they are going to do a great job. I love how tall and slender they are. They'll fit nicely in the refrigerator without taking up a lot of footprint space. And then that nice tight sealing lid should help give me that really fizzy second fermentation that we're aiming for. One of the most popular questions on uh, the, that I get about kombucha is, my kombucha is not very fizzy, how can I fix that? How can I make my kombucha fizzy? And basically, what I've discovered is that if you have a good, first of all, your first brew has to be a good brew and it has to be uh, rich enough to have lots of colony in it, lots of bacteria and yeast. Then your fruit sugars has to be from an organic, or if not organic, at least a 100% pure fruit juice so there's not preservatives and other ingredients so lots of good fruit sugars in there and then a good tight fitting lid if you have all of those ingredients and with the proper time in the pantry usually i go three or four days in the pantry and then i transfer to the refrigerator you should get a fizzy kombucha if not you might want to consider temperature of your pantry or maybe it's just not having enough time Again, I don't know everything. I'm just sharing my experience. And uh, from most of my experience, if I have all of those ingredients, a good brew, good fruit sugars, a good tight fitting lid, and plenty of time in the pantry and refrigerator, I get good fizzy kombucha. Since we have to wait for this to cool off a little bit, let's go ahead and talk about another popular question about kombucha. I haven't thought about anything else to say about 2018 except for thank you. Thank you for being a part of my journey and thank you for helping to make my story on YouTube successful. I want to make sure that point is well made. Thank you. We can talk about the question of what do I do with my scobies? Well, 
if you want to keep them all, like some people just want to keep them just in case one goes bad or whatever, and there's a lot of a lot of suggestions about putting it in the refrigerator or dehydrating them or whatever. I've never dehydrated a SCOBY for the purpose of rehydrating it, so I can't tell you whether that is a good method or not, but I can tell you that in my experience, putting it in the refrigerator hasn't been good. Uh, it, that kombucha, the, the SCOBY, that pellicle, that mass that you put aside for your next batch and you're waiting, maybe you're going to be, you know, three or four months to make your next batch, so you feel like you have to put it in storage. Well, the refrigerator, in my opinion, is not a good place because it gets cold and I've actually had some die. They get slimy and gooey and smelly and that's not a good SCOBY. So what I suggest, and I've done many times and it works every time, is that you get a batch ready and you, you make sure you have enough starter liquid in there just like you're making a new batch and you can take all of those SCOBYs and put down in there some people call it a SCOBY hotel and they'll put multiple layers of SCOBYs in there and uh, just store them. So what happens is every four, six weeks or so when you notice the liquid level going down because of evaporation, you just put a little bit of fresh black sweet tea in there and that feeds it and fills that liquid layer up and it, they're going to last just fine. These will last a very long time at room temperature in a vinegar batch of kombucha. They just like to sit there and they'll sit there for a very long time. I had one sit in the pantry for, I bet it was six months and it was still usable. I didn't end up needing it because I had plenty of others, but it was interesting for me to see how that could sit in the pantry and be perfectly usable after that extended period of time. Speaking of videos from 2018 made here in the kitchen, since we're speaking about that, have you guys seen the pumpkin seed video? The chaya, the chaya leaf video making the chaya powder? And the one I just did yesterday, you can go check it out, it's brand new, how I make my sauerkraut. It's so yummy. That's all in a playlist called In the Kitchen. Look how colorful and pretty those bottles are in the pantry. Can't wait to taste those. All right, we gave this plenty of time to cool down. It feels good. So we're gonna transfer the scobies that we're keeping, the top layers from both jars before. Put those in here. And then make sure we get plenty of liquid in there as well. That one scoby did sink. Lots of starter liquid. At least one cup for each new batch. So what can you do with those leftover scobies if you don't have anyone to give them to? You don't have a batch for them because if you're actively making kombucha, you're going to end up with a lot of extra scobies. So here are just a couple of ideas. One, find a friend that needs to start kombucha. Give them a start. Give them a little liquid. Give them a scoby and uh, show them how to do it. Show them my video or go over and teach them how to do it. Another thing that we have done is that we have dehydrated them. First of all, we cut them up in strips and dehydrated them until they're perfectly dry and then we use them as dog treats. The dogs love chewing on them. It ended up being kind of like a, um, uh, a leather strip that you could buy at the pet store for them to chew on. Some people claim that they don't do well in compost. I have composted some. They don't compost fast but you could try that. There have been stories even of people dehydrating them and then soaking them in some sort of a, a jerky uh, liquid and eating them themselves. I don't really want to try that one, but I have heard of that. If you have interesting ways of using old SCOBY, you can put those in the comments below. I would love to hear that. 
Thank you so much for hanging out with me in my kitchen on a night where I just needed to get something done and I wanted to talk a little bit about this last year. This is the last video of 2018 and it's been a good year. We've had lots of ups, lots of downs, but overall we had a good year and I really am glad that you are here with me to join in my story and you are allowing me to be a part of yours. Thanks for this time. I look forward to sharing more with you real soon. I'll talk to you soon.